ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Tonight's sponsor is Veena and Prem Gupta. May Krishna bless their family more and more, enlighten them, and bring them closer to your lotus feet, O Lord. In the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is the section called Kapila Shiksha. Lord Kapila is incarnation of Vasudev Krishna God himself and he was born to the great sage Kardama Muni and Devahuti Devahuti was a very qualified princess she was the daughter of Swayam Bhuva Manu the first of the 14 manus in one day of brahma and kardama muni was a great sage so the lord was so pleased with kardama and devahuti that he agreed to become their son and that son's name was kapila and when kardama muni left to take sanyas devahuti approached her son and said that i want to take instruction from you i know that you are the supreme personality of godhead and i want to know the absolute truth from you since you yourself are the absolute truth personified so there was a series of questions by devahuti beginning in the 25th chapter of the third canto all the way to chapter 32 so i believe that's eight chapters and the specific philosophy of kapila is called sankhya yoga enumerating categorizing the material universe into 24 26 27 different items so in the course of questions and answers devahuti wanted to know about different kinds of devotees for the pure devotee there are five kinds they have a relationship with krishna either in the rasa of shanta passive neutrality adoration or dasya the relationship of servitude as in the case of bhaktaraj hanuman or the relationship of sakya friendship like arjuna or the cowherder boys of rajabhumi and then there is vatsalya parental as in the case of vasudev devaki nanda yashoda rohini and the elderly gopas and gopis in vrindavan all have that parental relationship and then ultimately madhurya rasa conjugal ecstatic love as exhibited by in the topmost case radha and the gopis then the queens of dwaraka and then the lakshmis the consorts of narayan So these are the five kinds of pure devotees. 
But for those who are not pure devotees, those who are called Mishra Bhaktas, mixed devotees, there are 81 different kinds. And we're going to hear about that after we all raise our hands and repeat after me, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Devahuti inquired, My dear Lord, you have already very scientifically described the symptoms of the total material nature and the characteristics of the spirit according to the Sankhya system of philosophy. Now I shall request you to explain the path of devotional service which is the ultimate end of all philosophical systems. So that's an important point. What Devahuti just said. The path of devotional service is the ultimate end of all philosophical systems. This is exactly what is stated by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Where in the 15th chapter he says, Vaidaishya Sarvayar Aham Eva Vedya Vedanta Krid Veda Vid Eva Chaham that if you actually study all the Vedas, you should come to the conclusion, Vasudeva Sarvam Iti. Krishna Vasudeva is everything. In the Bhagavad Gita, three times, Krishna says, you want to know me? Bhakti. You want to see me as I am? Bhakti. You want to come back to me? Bhakti. Devotional service. So it's the end of all philosophical systems and in Bhakti. My dear Lord, Please also describe in detail, both for me and for people in general, the continual process of birth and death. For by hearing of such calamities, we may become detached from the activities of this material world. So, this is another concept in the Vedas. It's also mentioned in the Ishopanishad. One should know the process of both nescience and knowledge side by side. So here, Devahuti understands that we need to hear the negative aspects of this material world for what purpose? So that we become detached from the dream detached from the illusion to as the song goes jeev jago jeev jago wake up what is it what does it mean i'm awake no 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 we're talking about waking up the heart waking up the soul please also describe eternal time which is a representation of your form and by whose influence people in general engage in the performance of pious activities. Same thing is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita more than once. Krishna says, I am time. Everything is in this material world is under this time element. Time represents God. My dear Lord, you are just like the sun. Same thing is mentioned in other Vedic literatures. In the 
Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Surya Sama. So this analogy is given more than once. Krishna is compared to the sun. One of my personal favorite analogies. So much you can speak about this analogy. For you illuminate, <coughs> for you illuminate the darkness of the conditioned life of the living entities. What does Krishna say in the Chatu Shloki of Bhagavad Gita? I dispel with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance, the last one of the Gita Chatu Shloki. I dispel that ignorance. How is that? Where is Krishna? He's in your heart. Right there in your heart. And what does he do? Cleanses, gets rid of the darkness if you take shelter of him. Because their eyes of knowledge are not open, they are sleeping eternally in that darkness. Same thing, Jeev Jago. Without your shelter. Therefore, they are falsely engaged by the actions and reactions of their material activities and they appear to be fatigued. Yes, that is what's happening. What does... Krishna say in 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Manakshashtan Indriyani Prakriti Starni Karshiti. Krishna makes it very clear what is our existential position here. We are struggling. Karshiti. You all know that. You just have to turn on the television and watch five minutes of news. It's all about the struggle for existence. COVID-19 and now COVID-20, 21, 22. Everybody is suffering. Earthquakes, blazing heat, causing forest fires, devastating. And we all know, we've been warned how many times here in Southern Cal, what do we always know is lurking in the back? Knock on wood. The big one. I think we should chant the Maha Mantra one time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So that ends part one. And Krishna Kumar will select a Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this Kapila section of Bhagavatam is a conversation within a conversation. Shukadeva Goswami is preaching to Maharaj Parikshit, he arrived at the end of the first canto and second canto, Shukadev begins answering Parikshit's questions. But the third and fourth canto, Shukadev narrates the conversation between Vidura and Maitreya. So this Kapila section is Maitreya answering the questions of Vidura. Sri Maitreya said, O Vidura, best among the Kurus, the great sage Kapila Dev, moved by great compassion and pleased by the words of his glorious mother, spoke as follows. So the interesting thing here is that there is a dynamic between the speaker and the audience. When the audience is attentive, when the audience is inquisitive, then the speaker becomes inspired and wants to give more and more. So here you can see Kapil is pleased with his mother's inquiries. The personality of God dead, Lord Kapila replied, O oh, noble lady, there are multivarious paths of devotional service 
in terms of the different qualities of the executor. So, for those of you who didn't come early, the context is that there are pure devotees, five kinds, Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madura Bhaktas. But those who are Misra Bhaktas, mixed devotees, they fall into 81 different categories. So, here Kapila Dev is explaining. So, devotional service executed by a person who is envious, proud, violent, and angry, and who is a separatist, is considered to be in the mode of darkness. So, you can do bhakti, but you can be in the mode of darkness. These are the symptoms. Now when it says separatist, the understanding is a separatist is someone who has a interest or a goal separate from that of Krishna. The pure devotee has no personal interest, only wants to see to the satisfaction of Krishna. But a separatist is someone who has independent desire and is not exactly on the same page as the Lord. He has some motive in their devotion. So the person in the mode of darkness, these are the symptoms. Envious, proud, violent, angry. Worship of the deities in the temple by a separatist with a motive for material enjoyment, fame, and opulence is devotion in the mode of passion. So if I'm worshiping the Lord, that's good. But we're trying to get to a higher level. So yes, I'm a separatist. Why? because I have some personal self-interest. I'm not completely one in, in uh, motive with the Lord. I still have some individual separateness. Worship <coughs> by a uh, separatist. Motive for material enjoyment, fame, and opulence. Now, when a devotee worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead and offers the results of activities in order to free oneself from the inebrities of fruitive activities, one's devotion is in the mode of goodness. So this is the stage that we should at least try to get to. Worship of God so that we become free from material entanglement. In other words, someone's devotion is in the mode of goodness when their desire is, yes, my Lord, I want to become free from material entanglement. I want to reach the stage of becoming nirguna, no material contamination. Now, how do we get 81? Mathematicians. 3 times 3, 9. 9 times 9, 81. In other words, a person can be a mixture of mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance, mode of good. Just like there are three basic colors and you mix the colors, you get all the colors of the rainbow. Right? I don't know the exact, but you mix the three colors in different degrees, and you get orange, you get purple, you get green, like that. So, devotion, bhakti, can be a mixture. 81 different kinds of devotees. 
but we want to get to at least to the stage of worshiping the Lord from the mode of goodness. That's why Prabhupada would not accept any disciple who was not willing to strictly follow the four regulative principles. Prabhupada did not want any cheap disciples. You had to be willing to vow, strictly follow the four regulative principles. And then, so that puts you in the mode of goodness. Now you add the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you're transcendental. Let's all chant one time, everybody. We'll have one more chanter and then we'll do part three. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bolo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we heard about the 81 different kinds of mixed devotees, a mixture of the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. Three times three, nine times nine gives you 81 different kinds of mixed devotees. Now Kapila will talk about the pure devotee. The manifestation of unadulterated devotional service is exhibited when one's mind is at once attracted to hearing the transcendental name and qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is residing in everyone's heart. So we all know who that is. If you've read Bhagavad Gita, you know that in your heart is Krishna in his four-handed form as Narayana. That's who's in your heart. Just as the water of the Ganges flows naturally down towards the ocean, such devotional service, uninterrupted by any material condition, flows towards the Supreme Lord. Same thing Krishna says in 14th chapter of Gita. Manchayo vyabhicharena bhakti yogena yasevate Sagunan samatit yaitan Brahma buyaya kalpate. There is no hindrance for such devotion. The pure devotee does not accept any kind of liberation. Salokya, Sarshti, Samipya, Sarupya, or Ekatva. Even if they are offered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead unless there is the opportunity for service. So Salokya, that liberation means you get to reside on the same planet as the Lord. Like the devotees of Ram, they're in Ayodhya, Luka. Devotees of Vamanadev are on his planet. And devotees of Krishna are on his planet. Sarshti, same opulence as the Lord. The Lord's opulence is unlimited. But you all know the story of Sudama. How after visiting Krishna, when he came to his hut, it was no longer a hut. It was a palace. He had unlimited wealth now. Samipya, equal status, friendship with the Lord. Sarupya, achieving the same form. In Vaikuntha, everybody has the four-handed Narayan form. So how do you distinguish everyone from Nara? <laughs> Srivatsa. The Lord is the only one who has Shri Vatsa, the curl of hairs on his chest, 
signifying Lakshmi, who is forever on the chest of the Lord. That's the only way. Otherwise, everyone in Vaikuntha looks like Narayan. A katva, the devotee will never accept a katva. According to so many Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they would rather go to hell than to merge into the existence of the Lord. Yes. Why? Because the devotee thinks, at least in hell, I can do some devotional service. But if I merge, if I become one, I lose my individuality. Where is the service? So devotee, these other, the devotee will accept provided there's some service. Because that's what sustains the devotee, their service. What sustains me? What sustains me is my daily sadhana of chanting and studying. What sustains me? Having an opportunity to come and preach like I do twice a month here at Radha Raman. May it go on forever. This is what sustains me. By attaining the highest platform of devotional service, as I have explained, one can overcome the influence of the three modes of material nature and be situated in the transcendental stage as is the Lord. That's exactly Bhagavad Gita 14.26. I just recited it. Manchayo viyabhicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samati yaitan. You have transcended the modes. How? By uninterrupted service. Brahma buyaya kalpate. You regain your original, spiritual, transcendental, liberated status. As is Krishna. Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate. The devotee must execute his or her duties, which are glorious, without consideration of material profit. Without excessive violence, one should regularly perform one's devotional activities. The devotees should regularly see my statues in the temple. So what we are doing coming to the temple is exactly what the Lord is instructing. Some people question, why do we have to have murtis? Why do we? Because God says so. He says it right here. One should regularly see my statues. So we're not making things up. We're doing exactly what is said in the scriptures. One should see in the spirit of renunciation from the mode of goodness and see every living entity is spiritual. How is that? Because Krishna is in everyone's heart. That we learn from Bhagavad Gita more than once. And if I have any animosity based on the bodily concept, that's bad for me. I have to see everyone from the spiritual platform. Krishna lives in your heart. I must offer you my respect. That's why we are told, Vancha kalpatarubhyascha, kripa sindubhyaivacha, patitanang pavanebhyo, vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. The pure devotee should execute devotional service by giving the greatest respect to the spiritual master and the acharyas. In our temple, we are so fortunate. We have our Acharya, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, 
Srila Prabhupada. The greatest respect. That's why I began my chanting today. Bande Guru Sri Charanaravindam. Bande Guru Sri Charanaravindam. One should be compassionate to the poor and make friendship with persons who are one's equals. But all one's activities should be executed under regulation and with control of the senses. A devotee should always try to hear about spiritual ma matters. That's why class is so important. Not just RT. There has to be class. People have to hear philosophy in order to stay convinced in spiritual life. And always utilize one's time in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Everybody, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Lastly, one's behavior should always be straightforward. In other words, no politics. Straight, clean, honest, simple. As, and that's the next word, simple. One's behavior should be straightforward and simple. And although one is not envious, but friendly to everyone, one should avoid the company of persons who are not spiritually advanced. Now, if you ask me, because I'm asked this question all the time, Prabhuji, how can I detect who is spiritually advanced? And my answer is very simple. Find that devotee who is humble. You find a humble devotee, He's advanced. That's how to look. Look for somebody who is humble. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.